questions to the Minister for Employment and Learning, and we will begin with topical questions. These will last for up to 15 minutes, and we will then move on to deal with the questions that appear on the oral questions list. I call Mr Thomas Buchanan. Mr Buchanan. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Minister, given that the University of Ulster has in the past six years dropped from 54 to 88 in the Guardian League table, what strategy have you in place or what works are you doing with the University to help improve their performance? Okay, um, <clears throat> I thank the member for his question. I would stress not to put too much stock in these league tables. There are, are a host of different league tables um, that are used uh, around the world um, in which uh, universities are ranked, uh, and that is one of many. There are different uh, weightings that are given uh, in each of these league tables to different aspects of university life. For example, some will place a much heavier reliance upon research, uh, and others more in terms of areas such as uh, student uh, satisfaction. Um, we have obviously a, a higher education strategy in place in Northern Ireland where we are working uh, with the universities across a broad range uh, of issues. Uh, we are investing as an executive heavily in the higher education sector and we appreciate the importance of that uh, to the economy in, in Northern Ireland. And I'm very proud to say that we have three world-class universities that are present in Northern Ireland that are really making their presence felt and are critical to our future uh, economic potential. Canon for a supplementary. Thank the Minister for his response, and indeed I do agree with him that we have world class universities. But in the light of the apparent decline, can you advise why the external review mechanism that would have identified issues of concern at a much earlier stage was removed, having been in existence since the inception of the university? And is it not now time that this was replaced? Well, what I can say to, to the member is that there's an ongoing dialogue between my department, uh, whether it's a ministerial level or official level, with the universities uh, on an ongoing basis. I mean, and they, those exchanges range from the accounting uh, officer uh, engagement uh, with the university around the use uh, of public money uh, towards uh, how we can actually achieve our mutual uh, objectives. And uh, just to give an indication of that, uh, I recently wrote uh, to the vice chancellors over the course of the summer just to, just to again emphasise the priorities that uh, this executive and, and assembly have and expect of the higher education sector, and uh, indeed the, the universities have acknowledged that and are working towards uh, those, those plans. So I, I believe that we have, we have strength. I, I urge the member not to put too much stock again in one individual uh, league table because there are a range of different measurements out there uh, that people are purporting uh, as a means of ranking universities, which always, don't always stack up in terms of reality. Thank you, and I call Ms. Katrina Ruan. Uh, Prince, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I wonder, could the Minister give me an indication of whether the recent changes to the educational maintenance, allow maintenance allowance um, have had an impact on the number of young people staying on in further education post-16? Well, I, I, would, I would say to the member, and thank her for, for her question, that um, obviously the changes to EMA were something that were jointly agreed um, between my department and the Department of Education, and then endorsed uh, by, by the executive. Uh, what they are seeking to do is to better target the available resources at helping those uh, uh, individuals from the, the lowest income households uh, to, to remain uh, in education. Uh, we have a very strong track record uh, in Northern Ireland uh, of young people staying on uh, in education, which is better than in other parts of these islands, something we can uh, be proud of. And if anything, the evidence uh, of, of recent years has been that that uh, trend has been consolidated and more young people are uh, staying on. And we see that, for example, in terms of the number of applications uh, that are going in to sit, whether it's GCSEs uh, or, or A-levels. So obviously this is the first year of the changes and we, we will see what the actual impact on the ground is. But we were clear that there would be a reduction of the number of young people receiving EMA, but in exchange we are concentrating the resource where it will make the biggest difference. Uh, and given that there was a dead weight uh, in the situation previously, um, we have sought to, to address that while preserving the core of the scheme. Ms. Katrina Ryan for a supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer and I wonder could he tell uh, me whether he's satisfied with the level of financial uh, advice available for students aged 16 to 19 um, at our post-primary and higher education institutions. 
Uh, well, I think the member is right to, to identify this as being an issue that I think we need to be uh, conscious of. It's, it's more than simply uh, an issue for those uh, young people in terms of how they engage uh, with either secondary education or further or higher education. I think we do need to, to encourage our young people in terms of the best use uh, of, of resources. Um, Equally, there's an issue in terms of ensuring that uh, everyone is fully aware of the support that is available to them and can access uh, those. And again, our various institutions will work with young people to give them that advice, and we're always happy to learn lessons as to how that can be done better. Mr. Dahi Mackay. Thank you very much. I got a, a brief last kind of the, uh, the Minister will be aware uh, from recent media articles. Uh, as some of the issues uh, and problems in terms of cross-border student mobility. And of course, this is an educational impact uh, and this is an economic impact. Uh, can I ask the Minister what he is doing to tackle this problem? Again, I thank the member for his interest in this. And it's fair to say that the, the level of student flows on the island of Ireland, whether we're talking uh, north-south or south to north, is below its potential. Uh, and is currently at a level um, below what has been the more recent historical trend as well. So there's certainly uh, scope uh, for, for, for uh, improvement in that regard. Um, the officials of my department are working with our counterparts in the Department for Education and Skills in the Republic of Ireland uh, to address these issues. The member will also be aware that uh, CBI and IBEC um, published a significant report on this matter in 2011 with I think it's either 10 or 12 recommendations, a number of which are directly relevant uh, to my department and others uh, to the institutions. We're working through th those issues. One of the, the key issues is the recognition uh, of the A-star, um, and I know his colleague, the Minister of Education, uh, is leading uh, on, on that particular issue. Then there's issues in terms of career advice, making sure that young people are aware of the, op of the options that are available uh, to them in the different uh, jurisdictions. And we've also recently uh, improved the financial uh, support uh, for students, particularly from Northern Ireland, who wish to study uh, in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, and while we have moved to replace the, the payment of the registration fee with a tuition uh, fee loan uh, to cover that. We have a much more generous uh, bait and support allowance, which actually allows young people to actually survive uh, while they're doing uh, their degree course. So the changes are in place. What we need, now need to do is to particularly encourage uh, young people to, to consider all of the options available to them. And uh, we're not there to advocate particular courses of action, uh, but to ensure that there's a level playing field and people have the full information available. Mr. Mackay for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, can I ask the Minister uh, if he has discussed the matter uh, with his counterpart, the Days Minister, Rory Quinn, uh, in the Dublin Government, uh, and what his views are uh, on the matter? Um, I have discussed the matter on a number of occasions with my counterpart, Rory Quinn. I also know John O'Dowd has had uh, similar uh, discussions. Um, I also appeared um, in the past number of months before the um, Good Friday Agreement uh, Committee in the Arctis, um, where we had a very healthy exchange around uh, higher education issues, uh, which also touched upon um, some aspects of, of research. Um, I think uh, it's also worth highlighting, given that the members give me this opportunity, that there's also potential to significantly improve the degree of collaboration on a north-south basis with respect to research within the higher education and also further education uh, settings. And in particular, as we look to maximise the amount of drawdown of competitive European Union funds, that type of collaboration is actually key uh, to really making the most of, of the available opportunities. Thank you. And I call Mr Ross Hussey. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware that the number of students registered blind or with a serious visual impairment uncorrected by glasses fell from 360 in 2007-2008 to only 85 in 2011-12, and the number of students registered deaf or a serious hearing impairment fell from 250 to 100 over the same period. What action has he taken to address this? Again, I thank the member uh, for, for his question, and um, we, we are aware uh, of, the, of those figures. I, I would stress and really emphasise to the member and to the House uh, that both the further education system and the higher education system are open uh, to people irrespective of any uh, disability uh, or impairment uh, that may, they may have, whether that is a, um, a, a, a sight issue, a hearing issue, or indeed a learning disability um, issue. 
And just to highlight one particular intervention we have made uh, in recent weeks, uh, the additional support fund um, which is available within the further education system uh, to provide support uh, to, to young people who, who do need assistance, uh, that has seen its budget increase by about 33%. Uh, from uh, 1.5 million to uh, 2 million. So hopefully that will begin uh, to make a difference there. Uh, but ultimately this is about uh, encouraging people to apply uh, to uh, further education and to understand that the, the assistance is available for them and there's no reason uh, that, that they should be discouraged in any way uh, from developing their own potential to its maximum. Mr Ross Hussey for a supplementary. I thank the Minister for his response. The extra £500,000 funding within the Additional Support Fund is indeed most welcome for potential students who have a disability. However, does the Minister believe that the allocation of funding before an audit is carried out to establish gaps in disability provision within further education is the best way forward? Again, I thank the member for supplementary. He's touching on, on, a, on a wider issue, um, and he will be aware we've had a number of discussions in the, the, this chamber on this issue, and also within the committee. And indeed, the committee um, are planning to do an inquiry in terms of the issue of uh, post-19 special educational needs. Um, we, we, in, in response to a number of representations I have received, we, we have conducted an audit of the availability of courses across the FE uh, sector to see where there are gaps so we can actually challenge those. Now, obviously, resources are uh, fixed, um, and while we can maybe add in some additional resources, there's a, a limit to, in terms of how far we can extend uh, provision. But I do want to say that we have, as far as, as possible, a, a uniformity of, provi of provision uh, across uh, Northern Ireland. And the audit that we have now uh, completed and uh, will hopefully uh, pass on to, to the committee uh, in the very near future uh, will enable us to proceed with that work. Um, we are looking closely at this issue over the, over the next uh, n number of months. We are looking in particular at what happens in terms of disability employment uh, to ensure uh, that we have the support available. So there's a review of the disability employment service uh, offer. There's also then the wider issue in terms of what we do uh, with young people, which cuts across departments. And I'm happy uh, to lead uh, on my own aspects and also those aspects that interface with other departments. And I, I've no doubt my colleagues in the executive feel likewise. Thank you. And as Mr. Uh, Paul Given is not in this place, I move on to call Mr. Uh, Samuel Gardner. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, does the Minister agree with me that the fact that there are no crash facilities at the University of Ulster in McGee will limit study options for parents? Well, I think, again, thank the member for his question and certainly understand um, the concern that he has expressed and that's been shared uh, by a, a large number uh, of, of other um, M MLAs. But I do need to stress um, to the members in the House, this is a matter uh, for the, the University of Ulster uh, to, to take forward. While this uh, department funds the universities to a large extent and sets the high-level policy direction, um, they are autonomous bodies. They're not, even, they're not NDPBs as such, um, or arm's length bodies. They are autonomous uh, from um, the, the department. It is for them to set their own, their own policies. Now, my understanding is that there was limited demand uh, for th those facilities, and that can be met uh, through, through other means. But it is something that no doubt members will wish, wish to keep under review and to push the, the university under as well. The other aspect that we will be concerned about is uh, in relation to any funds that have been uh, allocated, whether recently or in the past, uh, and if there's uh, appropriate, we will seek to claw those back uh, if they're no longer being used for the purpose originally allocated. Mr. Samuel Gardner for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy St Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his, his response to my question. But further, could I ask how the Minister is working alongside the Office of the First uh, and Deputy First Minister to ensure that the child care strategy takes account of parents who are studying in further or higher education? Again, I thank the member for his question. Again, he touches on a much uh, wider issue relating to, to childcare. He rightly identifies that it is OFM, DFM who take the lead on a childcare strategy, and, and I understand that they're at a very advanced uh, stage uh, in, in, in that process. Um, my department is very keen to work and collaborate with them um, in relation to that. And in particular, we have a distinct role in terms of ensuring that we're upskilling uh, the workforce in that regard. Um, I would also highlight that we have a commitment to widening participation 
uh, in terms of both further education and higher education. And that does include ensuring that people from a range of backgrounds can, can access um, the, the course of choices, the, the, sort of the choices of, of course uh, that, that, that uh, are, are available. And childcare is obviously a dimension to that. Thank you. And uh, that ends the period for topical questions. So we will now move on.